today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. We are 60 years into a war on poverty, and giving poor people money still feels new. When you are coming from poverty, you're stuck. People say to me, Mayor, what's the uh, solution to poverty? And I answer with a very simple one word answer money. It costs money just to exist. We started with one mayor in one small city with 125 people, and now we're at 80 mayors. In the city of Providence, Austin, here in Long Beach, the city of New Orleans. I'm guaranteed income. Help me get back to work. You put a little gas in my tank, I'll show you how far I can go. It's much easier to integrate a bus than it is to guarantee an annual income, for instance, to get rid of poverty. My father called for the guaranteed income. We have to figure out how to develop the wheel in people. America has always sold this dream of there's nothing you can accomplish throughout hard work. Well, all the hardworking people aren't getting fair wages. So America has to explain that. We live in a nation that is the richest on the planet Earth. We spend about $630 billion helping people with wealth, giving them tax breaks to create more wealth. But as soon as you start talking about giving basic income, people start asking, well, what are they gonna do with that money? Well, it's $500 toward food every month. $500 a lot of people don't think is a lot, but it is a lot to a lot of people. When you hear about how bad the government is and then they did something like this, it's like, well, makes you rethink things. I don't think we know yet if this is a moment in time or if this is a fundamental shift in the way we think about who we are as a country. I think it depends on what we do next. Good afternoon and welcome back to My Harlem Portraits, the show that aims at shedding a light on the fundamental contribution of African-Americans to the building of this country and on Black excellence. Today, to talk about Black excellence and to talk about this incredible contribution, we have some very, very special guests because we are at Tribeca Film Festival. And we have Emmy and Peabody Award-winning director, Mark Levine, and executive producer and founder of Mayors for Guaranteed Income, as well as End Poverty in California, Michael Tabs. Welcome to My Harlem Portraits. Good to be here. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, thank you for your time, because I know you're very, very busy because Trebek is starting. Congratulations for having this world premiere of your timely new film, It's Basic by Blowback Production at Tribeca Festival 2023 in the spotlight, spotlight documentary section. It's basic give people money. With a guaranteed in income to those who need it most is the apparently simple answer you give to the long debated thorny questions, how do we combat poverty, economic, insecurity and inequality in US. This film tells the real story of several people, several recipients in five different cities, St. Paul, Minnesota, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Newark, New Jersey, Gainesville, Florida, and Los Angeles, California. Michael, when you were elected mayor stock Stockton at 26, you became the youngest mayor of a major US city. And among your many, many innovative measures, you implemented the first ever municipality-backed guaranteed income pilot program in the country. After your term in office, you created, a, and you are now the chair of Mayors for a Guaranteed Income, which is a network that has reached now nearly or more than 100 mayors. And uh, these people, like yourself, want to ensure that all Americans have a basic income. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, well, first of all, thank you so much for, for having us. And um, I think it's timely for your show because 
guaranteed income has a long history, um, but particularly a history rooted deeply in the civil rights tradition. So mm -hmm. you had folks like Dr. King calling for a guaranteed income in his last book, Where Do We Go From Here? You have the Black Panthers and their 10-point plan, one of them being a job guarantee and or a guaranteed income. Mm -hmm. um, and you see sort of around the country, you mentioned 100 plus mayors, many of them are African-American mayors. Mm -hmm. um, even in places that aren't majority African-American, like St. Paul, Minnesota, where one of the stars of the film, Mayor Melvin Carter is. Um, so, so really happy to be having this conversation with you. In terms of the guaranteed income pilot in Stockton, California, where I was mayor, we announced we were doing this in 2017. So it was a radically different world. This pre-COVID is before um, Andrew Yang even announced he was running for president. And we said, we're going to give 125 people $500 a month. And at the time, the idea seemed anything but basic. It seemed radical. It seemed um, contrary. It, it yeah. seemed so different in, in, in for how people were thinking about the economy. And I think what the film illustrates and what really motivated the work in Stockton and now what's happening across this country is that, no, it's really about seeing... <laughs> other people as being worthy of dignity just like we are. It, it's really about understanding that the issue with poverty or the issue with economic insecurity isn't that people aren't working or don't want to work. It isn't that people are lazy. It isn't that people don't know how to spend money. The issue is that wages have not cut, caught up with inflation, that cost of living is incredibly high. The issue is that folks don't have enough money. Um, so it's been incredibly inspiring to see. And I think Mark and the team did an amazing job of just charting the momentum yes. where it doesn't feel like it, it, it did a good job of showing it's not just one city and one mayor, but it's a team of mayors and a team of cities doing this work. And then more importantly, it's <laughs> across the country who are finding creative, important and necessary things to do with something as small as $500. Yes. Thank you for this presentation. Mark, you, as we said, you are an award-winning independent filmmaker with a very extraordinary career, which has been dedicated to telling powerful real stories with a deep social impact, among which a groundbreaking docu-series about Mayor Cory Booker. I chose that because I love Cory Booker <laughs> and the city of New York. <laughs> uh, how did you meet Michael and what prompted you to get involved in this project? And why did you choose those particular cities and stories? Well, I met Michael um, when we were thinking about doing a film, uh, a documentary in Stockton. Uh, part of what attracted us, besides him being uh, the youngest mayor of a major U.S. city, as you mentioned, at age 26, uh, was that he was running this first guaranteed income pilot. And uh, Daphne Pickerson, my producer, and myself, we had just completed three films for HBO on kind of how these global economic changes were impacting everyday people. Uh, so we, we had heard about universal basic income, guaranteed income. And when we heard that Stockton had the youngest mayor and that they were trying this, we said, let's go out there. And that's how I met Michael. And that eventually led to the Emmy nominated uh, HBO documentary Stockton on my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when Michael uh, moved to LA and uh, you know put together this network um, of mayors for guaranteed income, uh, one of the first cities was St. Paul, uh, which is what, you know, made St. Paul kind of an anchor in this film with Mayor Carter and uh, with uh, the participants that we follow there, Lucille and Abby and Anders. Um, and that was the only city we were able to kind of see from beginning to end that we could track the whole thing, a whole year of people getting 500 a month and then see what happens after they come off the program. The other cities uh, were chosen, Cambridge, Newark, uh, Gainesville, and uh, Los Angeles, uh, really in conversations with the community groups, the mayors, uh, they were the most uh, receptive. 
Uh, we didn't want to force ourselves on anyone. I mean, I want it to be understood that the participants themselves were self-selected. In other words, as part of the way they set this project up, it's being studied by uh, academics from the University of Pennsylvania. So they set up a cadre, a storytelling cadre of people who volunteered to be storytellers that wouldn't be polluted uh, in the rest of the study group. Um, so these people were self-selected, the community groups were incredibly helpful, and the mayors were all like, you know, you're welcome, you know, any way we can help you. So that's how we ended up in those five cities. And uh, it was fantastic because uh, I just took down a couple of sentences, a couple of phrases that were said by some of uh, the participants, which really struck me, like Abby, my extra money does not make me any lazier. That's what you were talking about. Uh, and then her husband, having a, a, to make money, having a kid to make money is not a good idea. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was another one of the, <laughs> of the criticism of, of his friends. And then uh, another, um, the mayor, the mayor, he said something, Melvin Carter, I really love this. He says, a small amount of money can unlock an entire world of potential of lasting impact and unleash the potential in all our children. I, I think you should stop at that because, I mean, I think that's a great way to sum up what this idea is that, and, and this uh, network that Michael's put together. Um, a little money can make a world of difference. Yeah. And uh, you might not believe it, but that's what we hope this documentary shows. It absolutely does. Because another thing that really struck me in your documentary, and Michael, under your temple, in your documentary, is that all these people, they all work. Not only they work, but they have two free jobs but still they cannot make ends meet. They cannot put, put the bread on the table and, and they are uh, really reaching a point in which they don't know where to look. And this 500 to $2,000 that you put in their pockets, it really shows that it helps. And from the outside, you wouldn't think so. So I found it, extremely extremely informative and it really also answers some of the criticism that we had in Italy because in Italy we had something similar the reddito di cittadinanza so thank you for this uh, for this incredible movie so michael under your term as mayor you raised over 20 million dollars to create the Stockton scholars a universal scholarship and mentorship program for Stockton students Stockton was named All-American City in 2017 and 2018. It saw a 40% drop in homicide in 2018 and 2019. In 2019, saw the most significant decline of officer-involved shooting in California and was named the second most fiscally helped city in California and one of the top in the country. Your same production team, Mark, the blow up, blowback team made the Emmy Award documentary that you mentioned, Stockton on my mind. And do you believe that these important positive results that you obtained while mayor were a very necessary spark that ignited the and sustained this party movement of mayors? Absolutely, because one thing about mayors, and there's a couple scenes in the film I think that shows it, is that we get together a lot. <laughs> we we get together a lot, we talk to each other a lot, we learn from each other a lot. And when we started the pilot in Stockton, I knew that 125 people getting $500 a month had to be a start <laughs> and not the end. So I was very deliberate about leveraging my relationships with mayors um, to get it to spread. And many of the mayors in the film, or many of the mayors, and particularly the founding mayors, were mayors I had deep respect for, and also some of my dearest friends. So Mayor Carter in St. Paul, 
was like one of my best friends. Uh, he's someone we became very close because we were married at the same time. Um, and, and, you know, young, like, and young at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Great mind thinking, like. Yeah. So I think part of it was just leveraging those relationships and 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 sort of finding like-minded people to your point who I knew would look at this as something um that was necessary, something that wasn't scary, and something that they should try. So I think it was it was it was a success, but also the um marriage for guaranteed income happened. Yeah, it happened right after we got the first year of findings from Stockton. So then they were able to use that data and talk about how, no, people yeah. didn't stop working. They actually were two times more likely to be employed than those who didn't get it. That no, people didn't spend the money on bad things. They spent the money on their kids, on food, on necessities. Um, so absolutely, I think it was a success in the relationships that really helped this idea spread. And now you have mayors who are doing 10 times as many people mm -hmm. and 30 times as much money and using not... Um, philanthropic dollars, but taxpayer dollars and really championing this and getting their governors to do the same thing. So it's been incredibly inspiring to, to watch and be a part of. And thank you. you. And one thing to that, um, I think what's fascinating uh, because you said how the spark started uh, in Stockton with Michael, uh, the COVID uh, crisis opened the door further, you know, because we all got checks from the federal government. All of a sudden, this wasn't a red blue issue. It was like, hey, how do we survive? You know, our, our economy's on lockdown. What do we do? Oh, wow, we actually need a government. We need someone that will help us all. Um, so, uh, I, and, and I think the final point is that um, in a time when there's just so much nonsense out of Washington in terms of our economy, you know, we know now the, the fight over the debt ceiling and then these talk of a commission to cut back Social Security and Medicare, et cetera, uh, that, you know, you see that and that gets all the attention. But here you have over 100 cities that are doing something that's moving the ball forward. Uh, that's actually helping, um, you know, their constituents. It's all, it's subterranean. We hope this film helps bring it to the surface and gives it the attention. As Michael said, it's already expanded from cities now to counties and hopefully states next. And this is, uh, this is, I suppose, something that you both expected to happen, but, uh, and hoped, that that would happen, but you couldn't be sure. And now you know, and you're showing us, you're showing the viewers and you're showing to everybody that it really works and brings good results. So that's very important. Well, I, I you know, when you were quoting some of the characters, I think that's one of the, the strengths of the film is uh, that yes, they're experts, they're, they're policy people, politicians, but the main characters are the participants yeah. and the wisdom that they had. You quoted some of, of their lines. The one that, of course, has stayed with me and I think sums up uh, what this concept is, is Lucille's, who said, put a little gas in my tank and I'll show you how far I can go. And that's what we're talking about here. Uh, is giving people the opportunity at a time, as Michael said, when income inequality and uh, uh, the gap between rich and poor is greater than ever, uh, how do we move forward? And this is an idea whose time has come. Yes. You want to add something more? Michael, sorry. Um, no, I think Mark, Mar I guess, yes. <laughs> in addition to what to 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 what Mark said, um, the only thing I would add is the momentum. And mm -hmm. I think what's so special about this film, it's not just about one place and one city and in one community, which we had enough footage in any of the many of those communities to do that. Yeah. In fact, that it cut out a lot of good stuff happening in, in communities, but it's about the same problem happening in cities big and small, cities southern and northern, cities coastal and rural. In the same solution, having similar positive impacts on real people. And I think for me, that's what's so important, because when you talk about policy in the abstract, it's easier to get um, bogged down in tribalism. And I don't think this is right, or this is left, or this is progressive, or this yeah. is conservative. But 
when you just talk about people <laughs> and what they're doing with money, then it becomes an emotional thing. It's like, oh, wow, yeah. I can see myself reflected in this policy. Or, wow, yes, this could help people. Or, wow, yes, I thought this was a scary, bad thing, but actually I'm in support. So I'm excited about the potential of the film to change hearts and minds so we can finally get to the policy that the film illustrates we probably should, if not implement, should seriously, seriously, seriously look at um, as, a, as a solution to the very real problem we have of economic insecurity. Yes. Mark, I found really extremely interesting that you developed these stories plunging this uh, uh, not so new concept in the entire historical genesis. You showed various presidents, Reverend King, the Black Panthers, Andrew Yang, and you focus on the impact on children. And it's an unbiased account of the benefit, the different criticisms, the outcomes. How difficult or easy, was it to do so? It's never easy. Uh, but uh, well, first of all, it's great to you know work with Michael again, and this time to have him behind the camera, uh, not just in front of the camera. Uh, so that was a great help. Uh, I think the trick was, uh, how do you tell the human story and yet still want to put in some of the history, some of the policy, some of the analysis, uh, but not make it uh, a pundit driven or policy driven. Um, and on the human side, each of the characters, you can get $500 a month, but it still doesn't, you know, uh, take all the obstacles in life out of your life. You're still facing very real dramas every day. <clears throat> so, it was about the balance. And then, and, and we wanted to show, as Michael said, the scope, but how many people can you highlight? As Michael said, we had to cut out some great characters because there's only so much. So it was, it's really a, was a balancing act, how to keep front and center the real people that are making it, that this is making a difference in their lives, show their lives, but not get too lost in it because their lives are complicated like all our lives mm -hmm. and yet frame it somehow. So you have a sense that there is a context to this. There's a history to this. There's a movement behind this to turn this into policy. That was a trick. It was a, a balancing act, really. And it was very well done because so you follow these people right to the point where they got it, and then you showed the results of it. You you didn't get lost, as you said, in all the in and out of this. And like, for example, Porja, she failed her test once, but then the second time she made it. And this, this income that you gave her was the one that made it possible for her to finish school and to get a real much better income. So you really showed it very well. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, you uh, tell us you have a premiere and many of these mayors are going to be at the premiere in Tribeca. So tell us a little bit about that because that's very interesting also. We only have three minutes left. You want to, Mark? No, you take it, Mark. Yeah, no, we're excited about the premiere Monday, June 12th, um, world premiere. Um, and we have many of the mayors in the film joining us, and many of the mayors who are also just leaders in this movement. So we have uh, Mayor Siddiqui of Cambridge, Massachusetts, who's in the film. She'll be there. We have Mayor LeVar Stoney of Richmond, Virginia, who was one of the first, one of the founding mayors of Mayors for Guaranteed Income. He'll be here. Yeah. We have Mayor Patterson Howard um, of Mount... Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon, I'm sorry, Mount Vernon, New York, who's also the president of the African American Mayors Association, she'll be there. We have Mayor Ross Baraka, yeah. one of the founding mayors and mayors for guaranteed income and the mayor of the great city of Newark who'll be there. We'll have Mayor Adrian Perkins of Shreveport, former Mayor Adrian Perkins of Shreveport, who was one of the founding mayors and mayors for guaranteed income and also one of the first to use public dollars, he'll be there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be exciting. And we'll also have some participants. Some of the recipients will be there. Um, I think Lucille uh, from St. Paul will be there. So, so it's going to be a, 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 a joyous gathering to really reflect on how far the movement for guaranteed income has come and also 
get some energy and some kudos for the work we have yet to do. So really excited and can't wait to see everyone at Tribeca. I can't wait to see that. I hope I can be there. At Please. The I'd love to be there. And hold it. Spread, spread the word in Europe and Italy. Oh, <laughs> I am. I am. This goes to Europe. This show goes to Europe. I have many of my many of my viewers who are from Europe. So, right. and this Excellent. is one of the main reasons why I do this. I want everybody to know what's going on in this country that isn't really told. Uh, one last question. What do you expect coming out of Tribeca? What do you want this movie to do? Go. Well, I, I, I would just say briefly that um, the real, uh, idea is there's going to be a tour uh, that Mayors for a Guaranteed Income is putting together for the next year into the election year. Uh, we're going around the country popularizing this idea. This film will be in the center of many of those activities. So it's real grassroots. At the same time, if we can get a licensing deal, you know, with uh, one of the many companies we worked with over the years, that would be great. But I'm excited about this idea of literally taking it into um, as many of the hundred cities that are actually doing something uh, around guaranteed income and using it as a, uh, you know, to, to, to inspire panel discussions and uh, other people to take this ball and run with it. You must come to Harlem to do this also. Yeah. That'd be so much fun. We could come to the Harlem, we could come to the Maisel's Documentary Center in Harlem. Yes. Uh, I, I know the people there, and I think that's a great idea uh, to have the film screen for a week in Harlem. Great idea. Okay, great. Let's do that. And we can invite some of the politicians from here who would be very, very interested in uh, pushing this. Absolutely. Okay. So... Thank you so much for this time that you dedicated to me. I wish you the best with this movie. And I, and I hope that the government will also take over and start doing this at the government level. That would be fantastic. From your lips to God's ear, I agree. That's what, <laughs> that's what I want to see too. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank you to our viewers for another episode of My Harlem Portraits. See you next time, 12.30, Saturday, 12.30 p.m. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.